Hey, in this episode, you're gonna learn how to build out a marketing page using the Tailwind UI components that they have for marketing pages. You'll also see uh, how to approach or how I generally approach setting up static pages like your terms and conditions, privacy pages, um, and all of those sort of normal pages that you would have outside of the logged in like authenticated views. So right now we are working on building out this form four tracker for tracking insider trades that happen on the SEC. Um, we have kind of like a list of all the filings that are happening for insiders that are trading on the SEC. And then at the top, these are those that we think should notify folks about. Um, and now we're at the point where maybe we want to like actually charge money or like sell this or help help sort of get the word out about this concept and so the next step is really to build like a marketing page or some sort of landing page for for the application actually really in reality right like if you're building an app like this you should get customer feedback and probably build a landing page before building the app but i'm doing this sort of for fun and uh so that i, I can help teach other folks how I generally approach all these different pieces and parts. At the same time, I am actually trading some of these ideas. So um, in fact, one just popped up on there. Got our, we got an email that says CHUC should, is worth looking at. Nine minutes ago, we got a little notification. The way that I generally like to build these pages is by having a static pages controller. So we already have a static pages controller here. And instead of having all the conventional Rails routes for create, index, show, update, delete, or all of those, right? Instead, we're going to just have single routes and we'll call them like root, uh, terms, maybe like privacy. And these will act as Rails routes where we can just render back a template that will, for the most part, just be static content. But this allows us to use data from Rails if we want to extend it even further later. So if we go to the root route right now, um, and in fact, like one other thing here is that we don't actually want to authenticate the user before they see the root page. So I'm actually gonna remove that and then we're gonna, uh, you know, refactor this root.html.erb template so that it shows our sort of marketing page. I'm just going to delete all of this email, all this content here and then go to Tailwind UI and let's take a look at some of these components. Sign in. Okay, so Tailwind has like a couple different packages and pricing models so like you can you can buy the marketing pages by themselves and you can also buy the application pages by themselves. I got like the whole kit that has all the different pieces and components. And so what I want to do now is just kind of like look at the marketing page, marketing page sections. I might even just like look directly at these landing pages, right? Because this is kind of the piece that we're on now is um, figuring out what the landing page might look like. Okay, so this, this first one, we've got um, background image hero with alternating features. Okay, and then there's another one here, illustrated hero with screenshot section. Okay, um, and then the last one is simple with offset screenshot hero. Okay, so I think the one that I like the most is probably this first one. Sure, so we'll grab the code for this entire thing. Um, so I'm just going to copy this entire HTML thing and then drop it in here. And it's pretty massive and it's gonna require like going through in quite a bit of detail and figuring out what each of the pieces do and updating those. But let's just take a look and see what we've got now. So if we go to the root route now, uh, we see, okay. So this is great. We don't want this header though, um, because that's not, this is like the header when you're authenticated. And so we've run into a little bit of a problem, right? Because right now we wanna make a new sort of landing page, which has a different layout. So right now we have the application layout and the application layout is where we're handling all of this, uh, the, the navigation at the top and you know becomes responsive and has a bunch of stuff for the application. Um, so what I would uh, often do is create a custom layout that is specific to our marketing pages. So we can come over here and say layouts add uh, marketing.html.erb. 
Um, and then let's actually paste in, uh, let's copy what we had in static root over to the marketing layout and we'll save that. And then what we wanna do is um, if we refresh the page, nothing is showing now because this is just like the blank application layout. So what we need to do is go to our controller, um, so static pages controller, and you can change the layout either from inside of a, an individual controller action. I think you can also just change it from for the entire for the entire controller for all the actions on the controller. So I think for this one we want to do it for everything in the controller. We're just going to say layout marketing. I think that might work. Okay, yeah, layout. I just did it instead of maybe it's just supposed to be a string. Let's see. Okay, so it's supposed to be a string and it looks super nasty. <laughs> okay. So I know I think I know what's going on. So in the marketing layout that we just created, we don't have like the same head tags or anything. So we need to go back to application HTML ERB and make sure that we grab all of this head. In fact, like we also need like the body, I think. And then we'll go to the bottom and add an, an end body tag and an end HTML tag. And let's see what we got now. Okay, so now we're back to a much cleaner UI, right? Or a much cleaner, a much cleaner look. Thing here, it says it requires JavaScript. Um, I don't actually know whether the JavaScript is included as part of this or not. Like I, I have a sense that you just get the, um, yeah, like you just kind of get the, the HTML, the direct HTML, but no JavaScript if you're using the HTML version. Um, so I think we're going to have to implement some of this ourselves. Uh, if we go back to the preview, solutions, pricing, partners, company. So yeah, what do we actually want on this page? Like what are people going to be looking for? I think pricing is probably one of them and maybe we just start with just pricing. So let's do that. So if we come over to marketing page, um, technically you could break out some of these menu items or the like different pieces of this UI into partials like Rails partials and then edit those individually. Um, but I think it's probably okay to just say like, okay, let's grab, let's grab the div that's inside of this nav element. So I searched for solutions because I know this is like the thing that I want to probably remove, remove solutions and all of the stuff that's nested under it. And then we'll just have like pricing and that's probably it. Pricing, sign up, sign in and then we'll just remove solutions entirely. The reason why I'm going to the div that's inside of the nav is my hunch is that when I inspect this, that is the, yeah, so the div here that's inside of the nav, like the nav is all of the navigation items, and then the div is just gonna be that first one. So let's go through and delete that. And then the way that I do this in Vim is I'm just gonna like visually select right where that angle bracket is and drag down and sort of assume that the indentation is correct. And hopefully I'm deleting all the right stuff. Okay, so now we should have just pricing partners and company, and we do. Take control of your customer support. So now we have to like figure out what copy we actually want to write here, and that's kind of tricky. Um, <laughs> so let's just, let's just start out with just like a pricing page, and we'll say that this goes to like slash pricing. And we, we haven't defined that yet, but we'll go back and define that. And then our sign in and sign out links, users sign in, so this should go to like, users sign in and this one should go to users sign up okay so we're just going to kind of like work our way down the page from the top deleting pieces deleting bits and pieces and then adding only what we need so if we click sign in now then i think wait user sign in we're being redirected back to the root oh maybe it's because we're already signed in <laughs> All right, so if we go back to the application and go to cookies, clear our cookies, refresh the page, and then go to the sign-in page. Okay, so now we see the sign-in. Um, we probably don't want the application layout on the sign-in page, so we're gonna need to figure out how to like tell Devise about that, but 
for now, that's probably good. And then the sign up page brings us to the sign up page. That's great. And pricing brings us to a page that doesn't exist yet, but we will create that. Um, okay. So we're going to, yeah, edit some of this hero page. Probably I want to take a screenshot of what the dashboard looks like, and then we can put that here. Stay on top of form four deliveries. <laughs> uh, better understand what insiders are doing, get started. And then both of those will just go to like the, either the pricing page or the sign up page. In fact, sign up should probably also drop into pricing maybe. Um, and then down here, yeah, you know, all the different reasons why you might follow form fours or something, get actionable insights about insider filings happening on the SEC. And then we can pull this type of data directly from like how many forms we have in the database. Um, and then here we go, ready to get started, get in touch or create a, an account, learn more or get started. All right, so, all right, let's get in and try to write some copy. This is gonna take a little bit of thinking, so I'm not gonna talk at the same time that I'm doing it. Um, all right, so. So I'm making my way down the, the page here. And now we're on the point where we're talking about these stats. So we've got 8K plus companies, 25K plus countries, 98% customer satisfaction, and then number of issues resolved. So the core metrics that I think, or the valuable metrics that I think are worth sharing here is, uh, sure, how many companies, how many forms, or how many trades we've currently tracked, and then maybe like, how many notifications we've sent or something. Um, and then uh, I'm not sure what we can put last here, but I'm sure, oh, maybe insiders. So maybe we do, actually, maybe we do forms and companies, which are gonna be the two top, and then we can do um, number of insiders and the number sent. Uh, but there is kind of like a tricky thing that we need to do, and that is to like show a number in this like human readable format. And so if we look at the HTML here, we, we see that this is like just hard coded as 8K plus right now. And so we can actually print out the company.count because we have access to the database because we're in an ERB template here. And we see that it's like 8,615. We want that to say 8K. Um, and so there is a like number to human method in Rails that's going to make this a human readable number but now it's like 8.62 thousand instead of K. And so we need to actually like do some translation here with which we can do like in our localization files. Um, so there's actually like a nice little um, stack overflow post here. So we wanna go to config locales and then en.yaml. So we're gonna to go to config locales en.yaml. And the thing that we want to override is um, we want to override this number so now we should be able to just drop this in. And I think, let's see if that works, just out of the box, 8.2. Um, ah, so that's it's supposed to be nested here. So number and then human should be nested one layer deeper. There we go. So now we see 8.62K um, and like 6.62, I don't know, like, there's arguments that we can pass to uh, number to human. So let's look up number to human um, so that we can shorten it because we want to round it probably just to like the integer. Um, so number to human precision. So we can probably pass um, number to human. We're going to pass the actual number and then we'll pass precision like one or something. Okay, so 9K. Um, so now it's rounding up though. Uh, and we probably want it to round down. Um, let's see. Sets the precision of the number. Significant, if true precision, will be the number of significant digits. Separator, delimiter, units, format, rays. Okay, so can we not go down? Um, hmm. Precision, why don't we just make it precision two? 
and then we'll have something point something. Okay, 8.6K plus, I think I'm happy with that, so I'm just gonna remove this, and we'll keep the plus on there, and that looks good. So that's how many companies we have, and that's actually like how many we see. So companies um, with um, trades, okay. And then the next number we wanted to share was like the number of filings. So we can do this a similar thing. So number to human for form four dot count. And then precision two. And then we'll just leave the plus there. And that should give us and okay, so there's a couple of things to think about here when you're doing this. Like number one is, um, do you actually want to hard code the class name directly into your view? Or do you wanna create some like stats instance variable in the controller and then pass that down? Um, this is, it's a little bit easier to do it this way where it's just like directly in the view. But if you ever change the name of this, this like if you ever change the name of a class or if you want this count method to do something different, or if you change like the default scopes on, on these objects, then you might get some wacky behavior in the um, in this landing page, right? And so that's just something to keep in mind. You might want to actually like create this as an instance variable in the uh, in the controller and pass it down rather than just you know writing our active record query directly in some ERB template that's like front and center on the marketing page. And this one, we're gonna call it notifications. And we'll say uh, notifications sent to our users, just like you. Okay. Or like, could be you. Winky face. Um, yeah, a little bit like, I don't know. A little bit cheeky, that's all right. So ready to get started, get in touch or create an account. Um, so we don't want them to get in touch, <laughs> but we could say ready to get. So every time we see get started, I'm just making that go to the pricing page. And um, okay, so that that's looking pretty good. We've got like some copy that makes sense. These images don't make any sense. I added like a little bit of copy here. This again goes to the pricing page, we definitely need to like go through and update this. I was thinking about trying out Copy AI, which is a tool that helps generate um, copyright based on GPT-3's like super cool machine learning algorithms. Um, so maybe that'll be something for a future episode, but I think for now, this is probably pretty solid. Um, okay, let's, let's call that good. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.